I don't know if you all have been sleeping on Aura Lynn's pattern shop, but they have some great stuff and I was able to be a pattern tester for their latest release, an Edwardian tulip skirt. It's a versatile piece that can be used for proper historical costuming or everyday wear, which is how I made this one. Now I am going to tell you I did have to grade out from the waist to the hip just because I have such a big difference between my waist and hip, so if you have sort of a similar body shape you're also going to have to but now that the pattern is released um, Orlin has made it a little bit easier to grade between those sizes and just kind of keep the seams a little bit smooth which is something that I did end up with a little bit of bubbling just because of extending kind of a hard angle to a curve you'll see but my concept for this was to make a sort of wearable mock-up because I didn't have appropriate fabric this really should be done in something a little bit heavier um, like a nice wool or you know, I've definitely done the cotton flannel hack before This is a linen and rayon blend and it is really nice and drapey, but it's definitely a lighter more summery fabric So I am wearing it this time of year, but with some layers underneath it will be nice in the hot weather though for sure but I have plans to remake this So I'm just going in and carefully marking all the little pattern lines on my pieces and this is made without seam allowance so you can add as much or as little as you normally prefer as a sewist so I added just kind of a standard border to everything and then I went in and marked it one thing about this pattern that did trip me up originally because I was looking at it and just thinking wait a minute there's no waistband and then I read the instructions and realized you draft your own so the waistband is just gonna be whatever your waist measurement is plus two inches just to allow for you know the seaming and the overlap at the back to close the skirt very simple and i think it adds a sense of versatility as well because you could play with this waistband and make it wider or give it more of a curved shape you know you can mess around with it a little bit but i just made the standard i think two and a half inch wide rectangle just have a sort of narrow waistband at the top There are also instructions for pockets. Now, in their shop, Orlin does have some free patterns and one of them is this cool waistband pocket. So as you can see, it's quite long and the top is meant to be anchored in the waistband of the skirt or trousers you add it to. So this helps keep it from sort of pulling too much of the side seam or dragging it down. And you can use that pattern. There is another more standard pattern pocket in the shop. And there are also just instructions for using whatever pattern you prefer and anchoring it in the top. Now putting in patterns can be a little bit intimidating, but I feel like this was my most successful pocket placement. And basically you sew the pocket into the side skirt before the skirt's together, the two right sides together just along that little seamy boy. Then you flip it out and like <laughs> pin the rest of the skirt seam together, leaving the pocket open on both sides. And then you stitch the pocket together. So you're sewing the top of the skirt, you're pausing, you're sewing around the pocket, and then you're going back to sewing the skirt seam. And they've both been already stitched to that outside and then folded back, so it gives a nice smooth look. I'm probably not explaining this super well, but on the finished product I think you can see that it lays pretty flat, it's pretty stealthy. Um, but it's a nice pocket size, I can fit my phone in there, um, and all sorts of other little trinkets. I did do this project on a machine because turn of the century sewing was largely machine done, except some of the waistband and finishing I did by hand. And I did do a few little cheats on this project just because I wanted to get the test done in time. So I will uh, I will show you my my horrible dirty little cheats later. The length of the skirt is also a little bit shorter than an Edwardian proper one but there is a pattern option to do a full length you know sort of foot slash ground brushing so this one is mid calf for me which is my preferred skirt length I think it's really versatile and comfy and there I go finishing up that skirt seam but you can kind of see how I finagle it so then the three panels of the skirt front are together with the pockets in you can see there is a little bit of like puckering from where I graded it out, so that is something I smooth out a little bit, um, but should be better in the final piece. 
Once I assemble all the rest of the skirt pieces according to their little markings, the back placket needs to go in. Now this is something I did a little bit of a cheat on as well. There's some instructions for actually kind of cutting out a placket. Um, I just took this open part in the back seam and reinforced it with a ribbon sort of sewn straight and then folded. Um, and then after folding over that part, I added one more stretch of that sort of cotton tape ribbon. Um, so this is just kind of to like reinforce it and get it to overlap just the right amount. So you see there, I'm folding it over now to give sort of a nice clean line that's going to protect that edge of fabric from fraying. So that back seam is reinforced now where it's open. I'm marking out also where I want my snaps to be. So this is closed with four snaps and one dress hook. You can also use regular hooks and eyes, but Orlin recommended dress hooks and I have to say they're game changing. After that's all done, then you apply the waistband. You want to get your sort of closures at least set first. I didn't finish sewing in my snaps at this point, but that will come. And I'm pressing this out very carefully just to make it nice and even. There still ended up a few little spots where it was slightly uneven. But, and then I'm pinning it to the skirt. I kind of did this backwards of the way I intended. I intended to attach the back first and then attach the front so that I could give it a smoother hand finish, but I don't know, sometimes your brain betrays you and I accidentally stitched down the front side. But either way, giving it a quick press again, I'm pressing actually the top of the waistband up so it's pointing into the band instead of kind of fraying down so it's easier to sew. And then here is my other cheat. So the placket I simplified with some like grow green kind of ribbon tape and the waistband, instead of doing uh, woven interfacing, I just did a little bit of interfacing tape. And so that helps stiffen it and kind of stick it together and just make it a little bit crisper. And you can do this with a more traditional fabric interfacing, but this was kind of my, my quick way. So you can see here now I'm applying the snaps and you can see where that second ribbon I added sticks out to overlap just to help create a seal along the back closure because nothing's worse than like it kind of popping open and showing your underwear unintentionally. So those I applied by hand because I honestly don't know if a machine can sew on snaps. I'm sure there's some attachment, some super fancy smart machine out there that can. Um, but I have like the most basic sewing machine. So I like to use my, my own two hands for such things. And I actually really like the sort of rusty colored uh, ribbon as a contrast in the back. You don't really see it when the skirt is closed, but I don't know, I think little finishing things they give me joy are worthwhile details to add to clothing. And that's how I'm trying to move forward. Not necessarily just churning out projects for this channel, but really focusing on slowly creating beautiful objects to wear that I love and mending and maintaining ones I already have. So there you can see the back closure. And we are back to sort of the beginning, how it looks. So I think just because of the pleating at the back, it dips a little bit in the back, which is fine for me. It pairs really well with the mushroom stays. And the other cheat I did is I did add one extra pleat. There's supposed to be only one pleat on each side. I did too, just to help, you know, accommodate the booty. Special thanks to my patrons. You can become one of them by clicking the link below. But thanks for watching. Bye.